Hi and welcome back to Le Web 2013 in Paris for what will be the last Euronews Google Plus Hangout. Um, over the last three days we've been speaking to all sorts of extremely interesting people, inventors, uh, world champion kiteboarders, we've had a former Buddhist monk, we've had startup founders, we've had social media pioneers and my next and final guest is certainly no different. He's a cyber illusionist, Marco Tempest. Marco, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me here. We're joined also by um, Ali in Kuala Lumpur. There's Claire in Oxford, England, and Michelle in Tallahassee, Florida. And they've got questions for you. I'm just gonna, just gonna um, ask you: Are you are you the world's only cyber illusionist, or are, do others exist? Um, I I certainly hope not. <laughs> so um, I've seen other magicians use uh, technology, which is uh, awesome. It's actually uh, um, to take it a step back. It's actually a, a tradition in magic. There always have been magicians which were a little bit ahead of the reality curve and used technology which was not known to the public uh, to kind of foreshadow a little bit what would be going on in the future. Mm -hmm. You said um, in your keynote speech earlier, uh, you gave an equation, future equals present plus magic. Could you elaborate on that okay, short so, equation? So I see myself a little bit like an inventor. So I combine magic, and storytelling and technology. So I'm a little bit like an inventor, but I'm not limited by available technology, which means I, I can cheat a little bit to give my audience uh, a feeling of how a future technology might be experienced. Mm -hmm. We're gonna let's go to the the guys um, online. Um, let's start with because Claire, this is your first time uh, in these Euronews Google Plus Hangouts. Can we start with you? Yeah, sure. Hi, hi Marco. Hi Mark. Hey. Um, hi. I've just got a question about education um, because I love the way you use elements of storytelling and surprise within a tech context. And I just wonder how we can develop this in an open source way for educational purposes. Um, I think there is, um, I think the main, I, I can totally see that this kind of technology is super appealing to tell stories and yeah, engage, yeah. engage students. I think uh, what probably is important that in, on one side it somehow is not just a, a one trick pony which you unpack and then pack it back up so it should somehow probably integrate into the curriculum somehow it probably needs to be easy adoptable not just for super enthusiastic teachers but for teachers who yeah. already have to learn a lot of stuff so yeah. I imagine my setup right now which uses a 3d camera and a, and a HD camera and then fuses the, the two things in a, in a big computer system is probably going to be too taxing for a mm -hmm. for a classroom but what I would imagine as a kind of interim solution until we have all classrooms with holographic projectors in like a hundred yeah. years from now uh, <laughs> would be to have something maybe which could be used with a webcam where uh, a teacher can just use a webcam and gesture and gestures get recognized and and then we on the other side so that would be the technical aspect make it really easy make it work on a laptop and then the other side would be the content creation so we would need yeah. some sort of platform or marketplace where where teachers can pack up lessons and, and upload them and then other people uh, other teachers can download them and rate them and so on uh, mm -hmm. it would be a super amazing project to actually yeah, uh, totally. put our minds to it and uh, and create something like that the, the technologies are readily available there in open source there's mm -hmm. There's tons of libraries to do com the computer vision and to the augmented mm -hmm. reality, and most of that stuff is free. But what it will probably need is a a little bit of uh, an injection from a, a cash injection, so so yeah. you know to hire a few people and and uh, and um, and get this thing going. But uh, that's definitely something I would I would love to be involved in to create Fantastic. this kind of tool. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, now in another time zone, let's go to Michelle, where in Florida, what, it's late morning? It is. It's 9.41 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go. Yes. I, I, first of all, I admire what you're doing uh, by blending technology, your niche, and your craft. What was it like to step out and say, I'm going to do something different in magic. I'm going to incorporate technology, social media, and being forward in this way, how did you make the decision to do that and be a pioneer in, in your history in this area? Thank you for the compliment. So, um, I don't know, I think you, 
as a, as an artist, the magic somehow is is art. Um, you should just incorporate what you truly love. And so for me, this was always uh, it was always technology. Now technology has not always been so readily available. Like I think there was a there was a time not so long ago when people would hear about a magician using technology and they would say, well, technology, isn't that really cold and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and without emotions? So I think it's just very recently that you know, video games are here and we have iPhones which we love to touch and swipe and pinch and zoom. And, but, but like 10 years ago, it wasn't like that. So when I use interactive technology or fax machines and remote controls people were like yeah but mm, so they were much more skeptical but i guess uh, as i said in the beginning it's just i think it's really important that you that you bring on stage and in front of an audience things that 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 that, that, that are true to you which truly inspire you and, and 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 i think that resonates with with an audience even if they might be not so much in, into technology also magic is a super wide field magic is an excellent field to to combine so you could be a comedian who does magic or you can be a, a sword juggler who, who uses magic so i think there's it's 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 very wide and and leaves a lot of room for expression the other thing is it's it's an excellent conversation starter magic it seems you can combine anything with magic and if people see magic then they they want to talk about it afterwards they want to talk with their friends about it so so if there's so so storytelling is definitely something which lends itself really well to magic what was it that came first to you? Was it a passion for for magic or a passion for technology? I definitely started in in kind of the magic camp, like like doing magic first, and uh, and kind of oogling the technology, like like kind of on TV, seeing computers which could do 3D graphics. Like that's like 20 years ago or so. My big uh, my big turning point was uh, when Steve Jobs left Apple computer and founded Next, this computer company which would make the next computer which was mainly aimed at, uh, at education, so it was for universities um, I wrote a letter to them and I said hey, if I had the next computer I could probably do the next wave of magic and so a few weeks later a bunch of big boxes appeared and <laughs> were delivered by the, by the mailman and uh, and I was stuck basically with a computer which at that time didn't do any of the cool things computers do these days so it, it wouldn't play videos or or have games on it it was a, but it had a very cool um, object oriented programming environment on it and so I kind of had to deep dive in and 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 and, and, and learn the craft of uh, of telling computers what I liked them to do was it a long process? Was it frustrating at the time? Uh, no, not at all. I, mean, so I, I, I really enjoy learning new things and solving problems. And, uh, and there's always also the, the element of, of collaboration, which I think is, uh, is something which might be, um, in a way, new to magicians. We have, a, we have a kind of a history of being fairly introverted. Even amongst magicians, we don't share all too much. But I think there's a there can be tremendous benefit of actually sharing and collaborating and, and learning together and bringing people in and uh, and creating things in, in groups and in teams. Mm -hmm. well, let's um let's go forward a few time zones to Kuala Lumpur and Ali. Hello, Marco. Actually, my question is the theme for the web now is about the next ten years. So what do you think, where technology will be by the next 10 years from now? Because you can interact with the gadgets we have right now. You can obviously show people where technology will be 10 years from now. Maybe not exactly like that, but for sure somehow like that. So where do you think technology will be 10 years from now? I mean, I'm, not, I'm not exactly a futurist, but I think there are a few themes which, which right now really... Um, capture our imagination it's like these these wearable devices where you know which we might find out that they're really creepy and we don't want them once everybody has them or we might find that that's exactly what we needed and we always wanted a little assistant which sits right here which is connected to the cloud i think robots will play a big part they're probably not going to be as smart as we want them to be they're not going to be like wally but they they're gonna do things. They're probably gonna clean buildings when we're not around, and and there's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of interesting things happening with robots. I think there's a there's gonna be some sort of augmented reality. I think augmented reality is this kind of technology which came along 
very very quickly and we and we still didn't figure out what we really want to do with it like there's no real killer app nobody's using augmented reality every day so it's uh so i'm very curious where that is going to go i'm sure it's going to do something something amazing um besides that artificial intelligence you know like we although we don't know so much about the brain yet and so and we're probably not going to be able to build machines which are intelligent in a way we, we, we would describe intelligence but i think there's going to be iterations on systems like siri which will fail less or will 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 play a role maybe in in medical diagnostics maybe there's going to be some sort of siri device for for medicine or some sort of siri device which helps you fix your your car or help you make things i think another thing another area of of, of of innovation will be education. I would imagine there's going to be a lot of changes in education, like maker spaces. We're going to be more communal about making things and learning things. There's going to be more peer-to-peer -peer learning, more interactive learning, passionate learning. So um, I think there's going to be quite a few amazing things set in motion in the next five to ten years. You um you gave you gave a, a beautiful presentation earlier downstairs using the the like home built <laughs> headset how long um how long does it take you to conceive and prepare a presentation like that so it usually takes around like half a year something like this and i typically work on two or three projects simultaneously and sometimes it's more the technology which leads and sometimes it's more the story i want to tell and we try to figure out what devices could help to tell that story um it's kind of maybe half of the time I spend alone on these projects. It might take like 10, 12 weeks to gear up and have something I can share with a group. And then I will bring in um, designers, software engineers, other artists, and, uh, and kind of rush through the time, which the time with other people is, 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 is obviously more expensive than, than just being by myself. Yeah. So. And you, you present a lot to corporations. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. What What do you offer the corporations? So in in the corporate arena, there's there's different. And so companies get together. They have sales meetings. They present their new products to their sales force, or they show things at a, at a trade show to the public, or they have press events. And a lot of times, storytelling and illusion is a really good way to say emotionalize their 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 content or to or to give people a, a better idea what it could be used for or what feeling it should uh, yeah. have so um so i work with these uh with these companies and i do sometimes it's just a straight up kind of talk a show and tell uh, about creativity and, mm -hmm. and and so on like a keynote and sometimes it's really taking one of their products and and playing with it and figuring out what else it might be able to do or, 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 or how to entice people to, to fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. And um, what about the, the film industry? Like um, what you do, it's, it's special effects on a stage. Is, is, the f is there a lot of demand in the film industry for, for your talents? So there, there are magicians who are actually specializing in, in creating or, or consulting for, for movie special effects. Mm -hmm. And also, there's recently there's been quite a few movies with magicians in them. So, so uh, there are magicians who specialize in, in in teaching actors how to do these magic tricks or to add a little bit of special effects and do some what we call like in-camera special effects things, which which you can do in front of a camera with forced perspective and like kind of tricks of the trade for a magician. Um, I don't do that so much. Um, but uh, there is definitely a feedback loop between the movie industry and, and magic because what science, especially science fiction, kind of has a very similar theme for me. They, science fiction shows us things which are not possible yet and gives us a chance to think about if we really want these things or not. And so they, they also take the conversation about the future out of the labs mm -hmm. and into the public. And I think that's very important that we all talk about what these things will do in the future and if we want them or not and maybe we can all somehow influence the trajectory of where these things will be going by talking about them now okay look, let's go let's go back to the three guys we have online uh using um waves <laughs> uh give me a wave if you've if you've got another question michelle you win <laughs> okay go ahead, i michelle. wanted to say um 
Okay. I wanted to say I was very inspired by what you said about Steve Jobs and just kind of stepping out and saying, if I had these computers, I would do this. How important do you think that is just for entrepreneurs, like to just dream and really step out there and just go for it and, and, and put it out to major companies and just see what happens? How important has that been for you? I see. I think it's... <laughs> I mean, it's in a way, it's really assuming that if you, you know, just ask for a for a free computer. But I think at at the same time, if you if you really truly believe that that something could change your life, and and I, I think I think it's okay to ask for things and to and to uh, and to, and to try to to get enthusiasm from from other people ab about your things. I think you have to do this on so many levels, like to to find collaborators. You have to. You have to engage people and, 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 and see if you can get them enthusiastic about your project. So I, I think it's totally okay to do that. And, uh, and I think probably every, everybody who wants to have a company needs, needs to be able to do this in some way or, or have somebody on their team which is willing to go out and say, hey, we work on something really, really great. And, you know, and that part, if you could contribute that part, you know, then we could do it or we could all do it together so i think uh yeah it's definitely important to to be able to do that now i'm i'm originally from switzerland where where in, in a way it's almost frowned upon if you go out and say hey i have a great idea it's gonna be awesome and it's gonna go you know it's gonna be a viral video or whatever. so um so um these days i live in new york where it's it's a lot easier for an outlier where i can say i'm a magician and people will not say yeah but how do you make a living they say oh wow you're a magician and i'm an actor and he's a movie director and so it's uh uh, I think it's, it's, it's culturally a lot easier for where I am right now. And uh, I think I also, I, I kind of picked up a lot of that kind of um, um, ways of doing things, <laughs> like in the right way since I moved. Well, there's only a couple of minutes left. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave to Ali and to Claire the, uh, the chance to ask any, any last questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. Well, listen. If anybody, if anybody uh, wants to see more of um, of what Marco does, MarcoTempest dot com. That would be a good address. There's <laughs> also there's some really <laughs> lovely produced uh, videos on TED dot com. So if you go uh -huh. to TED and you type my name, there's a uh, there's five of my pieces, which uh, which are kind of the the last few things I did, which uh, which are a really good starting point to to check out what I'm doing. Okay, well, listen, Marco, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I hope you've enjoyed your time here at Web as well over the last few days. I need to also thank uh, the people at Freecaster, the guys who are making this all, all possible. That's, uh, that's Michelle, Katerina, Nicola, uh, the people at Euronews who are helping make this possible, Franck Simon, Thomas, Chinda, Grégoire, and Benoit from Google. Listen, I've had a great time here. Um, I hope you have too. Hopefully we'll see you next year at Le Web, or perhaps uh, even before. So thank you very much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.